pillar to post and coast to coast, this is the law. Live audio wrestling. All right, Dan Levransky here for the Fight Network and Live Audio Wrestling. I'm with the man, Frankie Kazarian, right here. He's working for Ring of Honor, with his, of course, with his tag team partner, Christopher Daniels, as the addiction. But you know what? I don't think we're going to talk about wrestling. I think we're going to talk about music because I know that you're a huge music fan. You wear that jacket with all the patches on it. Uh, so let's. Well, we got. I'm going to start with my favorite band because it's on your jacket, and that's Motorhead. What? Give me. What's? Give me some Motorhead thoughts. Good here. choice. First of all, I'm I'm slouching. My mom would kill me. Uh, oh yeah, Motorhead's on the. I mean, they're. You know, I um. In addition to loving music, I play bass guitar, and um, certainly Lemmy. Uh, and his unique approach to the bass guitar, I really gravitated towards that at a young age. And Motorhead were just the, you know, they're like, they're just like they were like the first like real like, like they looked like Western outlaws yeah. of of, of punk Western. rock and heavy metal. You know what I'm saying? Especially the uh, the album covers yeah. and it's um, and just very much intrigued. Especially when I got into, you know, the Metallicas and the Anthraxes and the Megadeths and the Slayers and seeing. You know, as a, as a young man, and seeing who they liked, and then discovering Motorhead, and just being blown away, and just you know, I mean, I I, I can't do justice to to Lemmy, or I can't say anything that hasn't already been said about him. But I mean, when you when you look up what a true rock star is, you know, I, I can respect the Keith Richards and the and the Mick Jaggers, but when I think of a true rock star, I think of Lemmy. I mean, you know, he was the living embodiment of what a what a rock star is, at least a heavy metal or a rock, a hard rock star. You know? So you kind of came to the, them, though, through those other bands, though, through because I'm old enough that I was actually around when Ace of Spades came out, but so you came to them through those, and they all list that, them as an influence. Sure, you know, my, my gateway band is was Guns N' Roses. You know, right. Guns N' Roses broke when I was maybe in fifth grade, and... I was completely enamored with him, and uh, through them, uh, a friend of mine in grade school handed me a cassette tape of Justice for All, and that got me into the Metallicas, yep. which is my favorite band to this day, and, you know, the big four of metal, and then into the, you know, I, I, had, uh, I, I had discovered bands like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest at a younger age, because I had a, a buddy who had a couple older like real, real, me yeah, he had two, he brother. had two older brothers, and they all shared one room, and the room stunk to high heaven, there's dirty clothes everywhere, and on the po on the wall were posters of, of um, Iron Maiden and Eddie, their mascot. And honest to God, w when I saw it, it, it kind of scared me. So I was intrigued immediately because they looked these didn't look like bands; they looked like horror movies. Right. So I was like, "What is this?" So I kind of got into that, and like I liked it, even like Black Sabbath. I liked it, but I was like, oh, "This is kind of scary." When I got a little bit older and got into you know more heavier rock i immediately went back to those bands and and just like i said you, i just dove into back catalogs into what these guys and who influenced these guys and you know and go all the way back to deep purple and you yeah. go back you know and it just and it just you go down the wormhole and then you really gather a, an appreciation for that style of music and the roots of it you know yeah and it's a very intricate storyline the way it is developed all through the years right yeah, so what, uh, What? because uh, I also get the impression you're not just a metalhead. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, there's a Beatles patch on that jacket as well. So, I mean, you, are you kind of like all over the map? I, I definitely gravitate more towards hard rock and heavy metal. Um, but, you know, when I was putting this my battle vest together, uh, you know, I filled up the front, but it's kind of, I kind of have themes to it. You know, the left left side is kind of hard rock or like thrash metal. And, you know, there's, there's, there's Elvis patches, there's Beatles, there's Deep Purple, there's Aerosmith, there's Van Halen. So you know, I just I want I didn't want to leave anyone out. Okay. You know, I wanted to I a I had a lot of space to fill up, and b I just didn't want to leave anyone out. I had to order all these patches. It's not like you walk into a record store like you used to and buy a patch. Know, you know, it's yeah. it, there's no record stores anymore. So uh, you know, I had some of these patches coming from China, Japan, Australia, you know, Great Britain. Um, so I spent a lot of time writing each, and there's two patches on there that as a metal head and a fan of hard rock that I'm disgusted that I don't have, but I am going to remedy that. Oh, and well, what are they? Uh, two of my favorite bands, um, Iron Maiden, yep. which was a huge oversight by me, and Rage Against the Machine, because right, okay. they're another band I really, yep. you know, because I got some, I got some bands that a lot of people haven't heard of, like I got like Rollins Band patch, I got a Danzig patch, I got Corrosion of Conformity, love, love you know, Danzig. yeah. So you know, and uh, it's I'm thinking like, how did I remember those guys? And I, it, it was just, you know. I did this all in one night, all the ordering, and I just, it was a complete oversight, but I will remedy that, and, uh, and I'm, again, I'm, gonna, I'm going to improve on the giant back patch, and uh, by doing that, I'm going to put, um, as a self-promoter, I'm going to put my own band's patch on it, nice. so nice. every time I go to the ring, people are going to have to see my band's logo and my band's name. <laughs> Do 
you guys get to play gigs very often, or are you pretty busy with the wrestling? Well, wrestling, obviously, you know, takes up most of my time, but we, uh, we released our first album, Doom Engine, in April. Uh, we've been playing gigs for the last couple years, um, and we just played one three weeks ago, uh, right after the album came out. And uh, right now it's basically trying to book gigs through spring and summer, trying to fit them in around uh, a wrestling schedule, which occupies a lot of my weekends, which is at the same time that rock and roll shows happen. Yeah, it's 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 uh it's not easy. I'm not gonna lie and say it's easy, but but I love doing it because I love performing on stage as much as I do performing in the wrestling ring. Uh, what about Chris Jericho, Fozzy? Are you a Fozzy fan? Yeah, and I'm a Jericho fan, and he's a friend. Um, you know, he's a guy that we exchange tweets about, tweets, texts, I should say, about uh, you know, music and albums and stuff, and uh, and uh, yeah, I stay in touch with him. I'm, uh, you know, he's very much an inspiration in terms of a guy that, you know kind of was told why are you doing this you're just a wrestler and he kind of gave everyone the middle finger said no I'm not you know I can do whatever I want and so that's definitely inspiring to someone like me who's kind of doing the same thing though you know I'm, I'm a bass player I'm not the front man of the focal point of my band but you know the same type of thing you know we don't we don't uh believe in these limitations you know if you're just a wrestler but you have another passion and something else you're good at and and uh something else that you can get your creativity out I say do it man you know between rock and roll and pro wrestling. I mean, you know, Vince had the big thing in the 80s, but even even still to this very day, they just, the two just seem to be so intertwined. I think rock and and wrestling and just the entertainment industry and wrestling, they, you know, but, but rock and roll specifically and yeah. wrestling have a very symbiotic relationship in that it's an audience coming to watch a performance, you know, whether it's guys doing incredible moves or watching a guy doing an incredible solo, you know, fans are there to appreciate what's happening on that stage, whether it's, uh, you know, looking up at a stage here uh, and looking at a drummer up on a riser or looking at a guy perched on the top rope, ready to, you know, it's the same thing. It's all performance. Um, we're performers. We're artists. You know, what we do in the wrestling ring is art physically with our bodies. What uh, we create and all other musicians create is art with their music and the writing of the lyrics and the melodies and everything. And it's just... Uh, you know, people come, you know, to, to have a good time, to be entertained, to, you know, you can you can watch a match that has just emotion and come away almost in tears. And you can watch a match that's comedy. And you can watch a match that's all action. The same way you can listen to a ballad and it, uh, music's a time machine. It can take you back to this place. You can listen to a song that's just a ripper and you can bang your head until your neck hurts. And you can listen to a song that's an anthem and you can sing along and just that connect. Right, there's that connection. And I think that's there with wrestling too. What, what uh, stuff do you like to use to get you pumped before matches? Do you, li do you listen to tunes before your matches? I, I, I do and I don't. Um, a lot of times I really like to just be in my own head and, you know, think of what I have to do, what my mindset has to be. But um, every once in a while, if I need a, a little extra kick-me-up, I'll, you know, I'll definitely throw in some, you know, something very aggressive, something like, like a hate breed or a Josta or a... You know, or Black Label, or uh, yes, Venom, yep, yep, uh, Exodus, or like a, a Slayer, you know, or listen, you know, and and uh, and just that'll give me that little extra edge. But for the most part, I try to I try to stay with within my own head, and, which can be dangerous, and uh, you know, think about what I have to focus on. But certainly, certainly, if I need that extra oomph, I will I will throw on some hard rock and some metal. Yeah. Any uh, chance maybe Vex Temper can do a Frankie Kazarian entrance uh, well, tune or something? You were, the, the song that Chris Daniels and I come out to, Get Addicted, is written. I wrote that song. Okay. And um, uh, about two years ago, we had to switch entrance music because we were switching characters. And they had kind of said, hey, we need you to pick a new song. Go to this database and you could pick it. And I said, uh, I have a band. What if I uh, write and record something? And they said, that's, that's fine. But I had to have it by a certain day. So literally, I went home that night and got out my guitar, which I, I play bass, I don't play guitar, 
wrote the uh, main riff to our song, Get Addicted, wrote the lyrics, came up with the melody, gave it to my guys, told them about the opportunity. They were thrilled. We recorded it, and we come out to it to this day. Nice. And, it's, yeah, and it's on our album. Yeah.